field of forensic science, we are often asked this question by relatives and friends. Aren't you scared working in a mortuary with dead bodies? I personally feel working with dead bodies is the safest job you could have. <laughs> dead bodies don't have any ill feelings towards you. They are not insecure. They're not jealous. And they are not much into office politics either. <laughs> it is safer than working with many living people. There's another question which I'm asked very often. You're a dentist, right? What on earth are you doing in the field of forensic science? Let me take you back to where it all began. In school, I was a voracious reader. I loved reading novels, fiction, comics, a big fan of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, J.K. Rowling. I preferred reading novels than studying. When I went to hostel for my college, I switched from reading novels to watching series. Series such as Dexter, Bones, CSI, Forensic Files, Sherlock, Whenever I used to come home for vacations, I used to watch CID with my mom. <laughs> because that is all I could manage with her. Never ever did I thought that I would have a career in the field of forensics. It was just entertainment for me. In the third year of BDS, we have this chapter called Forensic Odontology in our textbooks. But our seniors, they told us it is not important, not important from exam point of view. And we all know that this phrase is more than enough for us to just skip and go ahead. <laughs> but the word forensics just stuck in my head. So I decided to give it a read. I read the chapter from the textbook. I found it intriguing. I went ahead and searched on the internet for a while, but then I just left it and let it go. I moved on like everyone else, focusing on the more important topics. After graduation, I decided to give this distant dream a try. I started searching universities where this subject was being taught. I started applying. When my parents realized that I was serious and I wanted to pursue this field, they reluctantly agreed. But in retrospect, it was probably their ignorance towards the struggle I would face in the future. I got accepted in one of the handful of universities teaching the subject at that time. And I took admission without even thinking where I would work after finishing. After finishing my education in UK, I came back to India looking for job opportunities. Like most of us do after finishing our education but I realized that I didn't even know where to apply. Shall I go to the police? Shall I go to the government forensic science labs? Or should I go to some hospital? I went from one corner of the country to the other, searching for jobs. I followed every advice people suggested. More than a year, I was searching. And finally, I got placed in KEM Hospital under the Department of Forensic Medicine. We established a section of forensic odontology over there, and I'm working there since the past six years. We deal with cases from all over Maharashtra and also some from India. So you might wonder what exactly is forensic odontologist? And what does a dentist do in the field of forensics? Let me explain it a little without getting very technical. Teeth are among the hardest structures in the human body, and they tend to survive extreme conditions. Conditions such as high temperatures, immersion in water for a long time, or even burial for a long time. So for example, if a person dies in a car accident, or in a building collapse, an earthquake, tsunami, or an aeroplane crash, the body may be rendered unidentifiable visually. Even techniques such as DNA and fingerprints are sometimes impossible to perform. In such cases, when there is decomposition, when there is skeletonization, when there is charring or burning of bodies, 
teeth being the strongest structures, we can use teeth to identify these unknown bodies. In most of the developing countries, forensic odontology is used regularly for identifying such human remains. In fact, Interpol recommends this technique as one of the primary techniques of identifying, just like DNA and fingerprints. There was a case in Ambarnath recently. A man had been murdered brutally and clothes had been taken off from his body in an attempt to hide his identity. This was during the summer and we all know the temperature goes beyond 40 degrees Celsius. The body was decomposing badly. This case was with the police for about eight months when they approached us for assistance in identification. Now normally when we do a dental ID or a DNA identification or a fingerprint, we take data from the dead body, we compare that data with the data of the missing person who we suspect might be the dead body, we compare and we confirm whether it is or it is not that person. But in this case, since there was no clue at all, we decided to reconstruct the face. We reconstructed the face using scientific techniques on that skull of that body. The picture of this reconstructed face was circulated in the area where the body was found. Within a few days, someone recognized it to be a forklift driver from Ambarnath. He was missing since the past few months. The police traced address of this person. They found his relatives. They confirmed his identity, identity and they cracked the case. They even arrested the offenders within a few days. Teeth also help us estimating age of a person or sex of a person. With the help of teeth and bones, we can easily assess what age group that person belongs to. You might have read in the newspapers, many times offenders claim to be below 18 years of age because they want to escape with a lighter sentence. In such cases, estimating age with the help of scientific techniques such as teeth and bone it can help us verify the age giving, given on the birth certificate or on the school leaving certificate of that offender. Bones, smaller bones and cartilages. These grow and develop in a very predictable trend. This development is not haphazard. For example, if you see a child with his upper canine erupting, that child is 11 to 12 years old. A very common finding you must have seen, grandmas say that don't touch a newborn baby over here, there's no bone over there. It is because the anterior fontanel over here, it's still open, the bones have not fused. These bones fuse at about 16 to 18 months of age. Similarly, there are other features on the teeth and bones of a body which fuse at different stages and we can say just by looking at the x-ray that this child belongs to this age or this person belongs to this age group. Similarly, sex of an individual can be estimated. A very common finding, I'm sure most of us over here have noticed, men have a more angular jawline. That is because the angular mandible over here, it is comparatively acute in men. It is more obtuse in women. This gives an appearance of a more angular or jawline. Similarly, there are other features on the skull, pelvis, and bones of the body which can help us in determining whether the skeleton is male or female. Another aspect of forensic odontology are bite marks. Bite marks are often found on the bodies of the victims of sexual assault, child abuse. These bite marks, if they are clear, these patterns can be compared with the teeth of the arrested suspect. And an innocent person can be excluded from the list of suspects or a perpetrator can sometimes be linked to that crime. There was one such case from Ahmednagar in Maharashtra. A minor girl was brutally raped and murdered. The postmortem revealed that there were multiple injuries, multiple bite mark patterns on her body. They were deep and clear. There were massive protests in Maharashtra at that time. Thousands of people on the streets of Maharashtra protesting this incident, demanding for a death penalty for perpetrators. The police had arrested three suspects. 
We decided to compare the pattern of these clear bite marks with the dental pattern of all the three arrested suspects, and we were able to link one of the perpetrators to the crime. In this case, bite mark evidence, along with other scientific evidences, was one of the most clinching evidence, and conviction has been recently uh, received in this case. There's a death penalty awarded. There are many famous cases where forensic odontology has proved important. For example, the identification of Adolf Hitler, the identification of Rajiv Gandhi, age verification of Ajmal Kassab, Ted Bundy serial killing, identification of victims of Dr. Death from Maharashtra, the Nirbhaya rape case from Delhi, Society has observed, society has acknowledged the contribution a rare field makes. But a lot goes on in this journey of pursuing a rare field. When I went to UK for my post-graduation, it was not as rosy and dreamy as it is made out to be. I supported myself by caring for an elderly with mental health issues. I worked at a grocery store. I worked at a restaurant. At that time, people pointlessly shamed me. Aren't you a doctor? Why are you working in a grocery store? Do your parents back home know that you work here? Isn't this job too menial for you? Now, I'm going to say something which ideally should not be said to inspire young people like y'all. But it has. These questions, I never really bothered much about them. It was because I was too lazy. I was too lazy to bother. I just wanted to finish my shift and get on with my next assignment. I realized that if I was lazy, and if I didn't want to work hard, I would have to do something which I loved doing. I would have to do something which I was passionate about, something which would make me which would motivate me to wake up every morning and not feel like I had to go to work. This way, I could be lazy all the time. Being lazy and shameless has helped me a lot. <laughs> I was lazy. I didn't care about doing menial jobs to pay my rent. I was shameless. I didn't worry about looking stupid because of the decisions I had made following my dreams. Forensic odontology is my passion. And it is not that I was always studying in the library or something. I enjoyed my social and cultural life when I was there. Sometimes I enjoyed so much that I thought I was, was I here for, to study. I thought that I didn't have a goal, I was just enjoying. But now I realize that I did have a goal. My goal was my journey with this subject. It is a different goal, one, doesn't, one which doesn't end at a particular point. It started in 2008 when I took the decision to study this subject. And I have failed several times since then. I have been counseled by my family and friends n number of times. Why don't you choose a more secure path? Why don't you set up a dental clinic? Do you know how much dentists make? And this one, I can never forget from a very close friend. How does your husband eat food cooked by you? <laughs> Women have traditionally assumed a more caring and nurturing role in society. And we are proud of it. But we all know that man, men can and they do take on these roles very well. Men-dominated fields are more vulnerable to reinforcing masculine stereotypes. It attaches a certain stigma when a woman chooses to work alongside. We watch serials such as CID at home, where the investigating officers and the forensic science experts, if you call that forensic science for a moment, <laughs> they're all men with a woman standing in the background. Just for namesake, she's there because they want to show equality and inclusion. Men and women are both working hard. They are both equally contributing to their fields and their roles at home. 
then why is it relevant what kind of genitals we have? It is irrelevant. I would like to thank all women who came before me, worked alongside men in men-dominated fields. And of course, all men who made it not a big deal. This is all we need. Please don't make it a big deal. Let's talk about real crimes. Criminal investigations, these often involve working with the police, working with the victims, working with families of victims, interacting with rapists, murderers, and so on. Having said that, it is probably the lazy person in me which doesn't want to work hard in a dental clinic. I just love this journey of mine. Even now, when I'm called outside Mumbai for a case, I have to be on duty, travel, and work beyond the regular nine to five routine. But it doesn't feel like work to me. In fact, I'm excited about it. It may sound strange knowing what my work involves, but then being able to help the police with their investigations, being able to help the judiciary with scientific evidence, it gives me immense satisfaction. Forensic odontology, has always been my passion. I loved studying it, I loved training in it, and now training my students in it. And of course, doing it full time, even though my job is uncertain. I believe that when you as students choose a subject to specialize in, or choose a particular career, after calculating how much I'm going to earn at this job, it will remain just that for you. It will remain a job for you. What you need to do as human beings for yourself and for the society is to follow your dreams. Your dreams may seem ridiculous to most people, including yourself at some point. But believe me, you will not be working. You will be enjoying your journey. You will be inspiring many people. You will be shouldering the responsibility of having chosen your profession, which you love. All you need to do is have some faith in your dreams. All you need to do is have the determination to persevere for as long as it needs. Carry your dreams on your shoulders when you're studying, and your dreams will carry you for the rest of your life. In my life, the role of the catalyst has varied at different in instances. It all began with my upbringing when curiosity was encouraged. It moved on to my amazing mentors and colleagues in India and in UK, and of course my parents, who have always encouraged me. But the biggest catalyst of all are the hundreds of dead bodies which are lying unidentified in the freezers of mortuaries. The pain endured by the families of missing people with an uncertain future. Where are our human rights when we die? Do our human rights die with our death? For every unidentified body which is found, there are loved ones, family and friends, still searching for that missing person in the hope that they would be found. These families deserve closure. Our society, we as human beings, deserve a death with dignity. And this can be, happen only with humanitarian forensics. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.